Hi, my name is Mike Bayo with Banger Inc. Today we're going to be discussing document templates inside Sage Intact Construction, how to view them, select them as defaults, and how to modify them all through Microsoft Word. Document templates come standard with the system and are used for the majority of the forms inside Sage Intact. Those forms might be purchase orders, sales invoices, customer statements, um, uh, you know, and other forms of documentation that you'll see in the uh, template. So to locate the available forms that come standard with the system inside Sage Intact, you can go to Applications, Platform Services, make sure you're at the top level or you won't see Platform Services. And inside here, you'll see um, a menu item called Printed Document Templates. Once we select that, You'll notice down, you'll be able to view all of the uh, standard default templates that come with the system, with the construction edition. So you can see we have some uh, AR invoice samples, change requests, customer statements, dunning notices, uh, sales invoices. And if I keep going, there's three pages worth of sample documents that you can use. Now, there's really two ways to preview these documents and get a look at what's, uh, what type of format these documents are in. Uh, the first would be to go actually into the document area that you're trying to um, preview and pull up a, a, a draft document of that. Uh, what you can also do is, is while we're in here, um, you can go find a document that you're curious about or want to set up in the system. So let's say, for example, we're looking for a purchase order form. Uh, I believe it's on the first page here. So let's look at the uh, intact purchase order form here. Now, what you can't do is you don't want to click view here. That that brings in the, the, the settings and how it was set up. What you want to do is to view it from here is you want to go into your document on the row here and click template. And what that will do is that's going to download the word template to your local machine. And once you do that, then you can open up the document locally and view it and i'll drag it over here now it's not going to look um it's not going to have finished data in as far as you know a live actual form but you get to see the layout the structure how it's built you know how the format looks and usually what rec i recommend is go through and do this first find a starting point find a document that is pretty much set up at least structure wise the way that you want the document to flow and go from there. So you can do that quickly. Um, take note of which ones uh, you prefer. There is a lot of them here. You can see there's three purchase order samples alone right here. And you can download the templates and continue on. Like I said, the other way to do it would be, for example, to go into purchasing, go into the area where you're going to generate the document from. And uh, in this case, I'll go into purchase orders. Now, you may or may not have existing data in here, especially if you're in the middle of deployment, but you can create one as a draft and just delete it when you're done. So, for example, here's a draft purchase order. I just want to print it. I just want to see what it's going to look like. So I can print or email and I could hit OK on the print here. And this will give me a you know more accurate look of what the documents and results are going to be. Um, you know, in this case. So once you find the starting point, uh, now you know um, which document you want to use. So the big question now is, is where does it know to print this document? Because there's several, as you saw in the uh, document templates area, where does it know to print this? And how do I change it if I want it to be something else? So it depends on the area that you're in. Um, in AR and AP, there will be some defaults in the configuration, and I'll show you that. Because we're in the purchasing or order entry area, those are going to reside in the transaction definitions. So those can be found in purchasing setup transaction definitions and also in order entry setup transaction definitions. So to find out the exact form that that purchase order was using, I would go into purchasing transaction definitions, find the purchase order transaction definition, and they're going to be labeled exactly how they are in the menu. And you can click edit or view. Um, I like to click edit just because it gives me a more obvious view of uh, what's going on. So in the general tab, when you scroll all the way down, eventually you're going to find 
a printed document template area in the print area. So this is telling you whenever someone uses a purchase order transaction definition, here's the form that they, we want it to default to. And you can see here, you know, all of the purchase orders that are available in the documents template area are available here on the list. So now we know this is the form that's being used to date. We do like that one. We just want to make some modifications to it. So now we can go back to the document template area, download our template and go from there. Some other areas, just to give you an idea where things are stored. If I go into accounts payable, setup, configuration, typically those configuration areas is where your templates, there's going to be a section for document templates. And again, just scroll down uh, and you'll see document sequencing. And eventually, if I'm in the right area, you will see templates. And I may be wrong in this. This may actually be in the vendor setup. Yeah. So for example, for vendors, it can be in the vendor type and it can be in the vendor setup. They pull up a, better, a vendor here. You'll notice in, I believe it's the additional information area, you have email templates. Actually, I'm in accounts payable. That's why I meant to be in accounts receivable. In accounts receivable in configuration, that's where you're going to have down at the bottom. Printed document templates. What's your AR invoice and what's your customer statement? Okay, so they're in various areas and you do need to track them down, uh, but the help can also tell you where they, uh, where they reside in as well. So once you find the, the form that you want to modify, you're going to return to the, uh, the platform services, printed document templates, and you're going to go find that document to, mo uh, to modify. So before you do that, one of the things you do need to do to be able to modify this uh, inside Word is you'll notice at the top of the screen here in printed document templates, you need to download the Sage Intact printed document template toolbar for Microsoft Word. So this is an add-on toolbar that once you download, will install um, quickly inside Microsoft Word for you. So if you get into Microsoft Word and you don't see the Sage Intact area, you know you need to come back into here and download this uh, toolbar. So then like we did before, what we would do is find the template that we want to modify, the printed uh, purchase order MCP, and we would click template and that would download it for you to modify. So then you would come into here open it up and I'll bring it on our screen here. And now we're ready to modify the template. And basically, um, you know, if you have a working knowledge of Microsoft Word, it's all the tools and functionality inside Microsoft Word with tables, um, you know, and so forth. So what you'll notice here is up in Word under add-ins, you'll, you should see an intact toolbar. And if you don't see that, that's where you're going to want to go back and, and, and download that, install that uh, in, intact toolbar for Microsoft Word. So if you have it here, you're going to need to log in. So your same credentials uh, for logging in to intact you'll use here. You do need to know your company ID. Uh, my demo data is, is I demo. And you'll need to put in your username and your password. You do not need a client ID. And you'll notice here with the asterisks, only those three were, were, um, were required. And now you'll know if you go into Intact, you're logged in and you can say insert merge field. So now, just like the custom reports and the ICRW, you have access to multiple uh, tables within Intact that you can add to this form. So depending on what form you're in is what fields will be available. So we're in a purchase order form. So we're going to be able to access uh, purchasing. And because purchasing is tied to order entry and inventory, we can access all of that. 
because you can add a project to a purchase order. You, you can grab the projects area. And then once a purchase order, um, you can grab accounts receivable and company. So you have all this data at your fingertips that you can add to these forms. So in order entry, now these are those transaction definitions that uh, we saw earlier. Uh, excuse me, I meant to be in purchasing. And then here's the transaction definitions we saw earlier. And the one we're designing right now is the one for directly in purchase orders. So now these are all the fields that are on that purchase order entry screen uh, when you're in that module. Okay, so you have access to that. So it's you can do some different things here. We'll, we'll, we'll do a couple different things. For example, logo. Typically people want to put a logo in. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what you can do is you can insert a picture. So let's put our uh, Banger logo in here. And we'll grab that. So now we just bring our logo in. We can make it bigger. Sorry about that. Mess that up. We'll just put it like that for now. You know, so you can put a logo in, you can move it around, change the colors, you know, so for example, maybe here in this form, um, you don't want the, uh, there it is, you don't want the color in here, so maybe we don't have an outline and we don't have a fill, just get all that out, okay, so you can do that type of thing. And, you know, cosmetically, um, the document, the purchase order number, we want to highlight it, make it bigger, you know, want to stand out, and we don't need a description of it because people know what it is, so you can do that, and then we don't need it to say PO date. Okay, so you get the idea there. <clears throat> what you can also do is do some different things, like let's say in this design, uh, we want to add the job number as a column. So, but I want to keep shipping method in here. So what we can do is we can right mouse click, and um, we can insert a column to the right or to the left and now we have a new column and we can make this a little smaller we can put this over here okay so you're going to be able to do all this inside the system and we want to get these back hit even okay so I want the same structure, the heading, so I'm going to copy the description from one field, bring it over to another, and we'll call it job. And now I need the job field to pull from the uh, intact data. So I make sure I'm in the, in the field I need, get back to my add-in, and you could have left it open too, and insert merge fields, and I'm still in my purchase order record. I always want to see if I can get the data from the, the main record first. So if I scroll down far enough, I'm looking for project. And I can see it right here. There's the project. I like to make sure my cursor is in the spot it needs to be, and I just double click on it. And that puts it in there. I like to get this out of the way. And then you could, you know, center it. If I go back to home, I could do all the functionality that I can do in, uh, in the system here. And there is a way to make this bigger. I just need to get this field out of here. So when in doubt, you can do something like this. Delete. And make this bigger. And then I can insert the table back in. Okay. There we go. Okay, so once uh, you've, you have the document, I would recommend saving often. Now, what I would typically recommend here is keep the original template the way it is. So I would, when, when you save, what I would recommend is saving as and maybe putting, you know, an abbreviation of your company or something that's unique. So we'll say, I'm going to put a BC in front of it for... Okay, and then I'm just going to, I like to leave the same name, the template, so I know what template it came from. So I just put my initials or, you know, or the company initials or something in front of it. And right now I'm just saving it in my downloads folder because we're going to upload it afterwards back to it. So I'll click save here. And now I have my own, my own form. So what works nice is if you have this on two screens, you can leave this one open uh, and I'll do that. I'm going to drag it over to my other screen. 
And what I would recommend here is instead of bringing it right back into uh, this form, what I would recommend doing is take the form that you like and click duplicate. And when you do that, it's going to ask you to name it. So again, I'll just call it, uh, I'm going to call it Banger in tech sales. And I like to put the description the same as. So I'm going to let everything default how it is. And see, you can download your uh, toolbar from here as well. And just click save. This way you retain the, um, oh, and I need to upload the document. Forgot to do that. So it says, please upload the document. I'll go back. So when you do a duplicate, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, bring the document over. Uh, so what I can do here to upload it, and I might as well upload our modified one. You're just gonna choose the file here and right in the download folder, wherever you choose to save it, there's the new one I just named on my local machine. You just select it and click save. Okay, so now if you look at your menu, and it should put it, I believe it puts it in the bottom here. What I actually did, I just realized I named it as a sales invoice, it's actually a purchase order invoice. So we're gonna go into edit here. And we're going to rename that because that actually should be the uh, purchase order MCP. So let's rename that, which you can do easily. Okay. my template again and save that okay so now we have one that actually says what it's supposed to be which is the purchase order MCP so what we've done is we've actually created our own new template and one final step if we want to make that the default template for the purchase order transaction definition we need to go back into the purchase purchasing setup transaction definition Go find that purchase order definition, click edit, and now go down and make that the default printed document template. So instead of the intact one, and I believe the issue is because we created it from the, because uh, I, I duplicated it from the sales, Sales invoice is not recognizing. So let's go back real quick and redo that one. So let's go back into purchase order. This is the one I wanted to duplicate from, intact purchase order MCP. Sorry about that. So let's click duplicate. Let's do this one more time. This will be good for you to see it. And we will call it, uh, we'll, we'll just call it BC this time. Okay. We'll upload the field, the form. And you could delete the ones you've, like I could go back and delete that one that I, uh, that I don't want to use. We'll call it BC. Save. Now we should be able to go to purchasing, transaction definition, the purchase order definition, click edit. And we should see that down at the bottom. There we go. So now what we're saying here is we want to use the BC intact purchase order form as our default. We click that, we save it, and now we can go preview. So now we can actually go back into our purchasing area, go back into our purchase order. And then you can pull up any one of these again, but we'll just hit print email and take a look at our changes. So we now have our logo in there. Uh, this, I picked a purchase order, doesn't have a job. Let's see if we can find one that has a job, but if it had a job, it would pre-fill in there as well. You notice our PO number is big and we changed the dates in there.
So it's really that easy to modify and manipulate these forms. Um, <clears throat> and it's very, very easy to do. Let me see if we can find one here. I bet you let's go into include private and let's see if we can do one of these. Yeah, one of these are going to have a project. And oh, that one's using the old form. So that must be a different uh, template on there. Do try this one. Here we go. And again, no job, but um, you know, basically, if there was a job on a PO, you would you would get it in there. Um, and that that's it. So I mean, it's it's that simple. Uh, you can use it uh, for all different types of forms. Uh, there are some considerations, especially with, uh, for example, the the progress billing form. Uh, one thing that's come up is uh, in printed document templates. I think it's on the third page. Uh, this payment application project contracts. Uh, cautious on this one because in the template, when you open up this template, there's actually some areas that look like there's no fields on them, but they're actually hidden formulas. And there is a trick to that right here. If I can pull up the document for you. So some of these forms are, oh, it looks like they've, they've updated it. So the form, these, these fields used to be hidden here. So it was really hard to know if there was a formula there. So you had to use Alt F, Alt F6, I believe, or Alt F9, Alt F9. And uh, that would show some hidden fields on it here. And that there is documentation in the community on that. And I'll, uh, I'll find it and post it on this, on this uh, live stream as well. But it's Alt F9. But it looks like this new form, uh, this is the updated form, it just came out with release one. It looks like they have now made these available uh, in, the, in the form. So it's, that's, that's an improvement already. So uh, besides that, um, what I recommend is duplicate, save as, and then you can play. Then you can preview and test and preview and test until you get it the way you want it. Um, but leave the originals alone in case you got to revert back to them or start fresh, um, you know, or go look at them to see uh, how they did it and use that as a reference. So um, it is definitely something that um, is, is a great function and feature to use. And you do not have to be a report designer wizard to do this. You don't have to do it through crystal reports and things like that, that in the past you had to, but um, any comments or questions, please post them in, uh, Post them in the in the live stream or on YouTube and uh, have a great day. Thank you.